Welcome back to another Vulkan tutorial. Last time we went over the graphics pipeline and created our shader programs for our vertex and fragment stages. What is left to be done is configuring the fixed function pipeline stages and creating our Vulkan graphics pipeline object. As the next step, we're going to download some code that I've written that encapsulates our Vulkan device. Stop, please don't run away just yet. Now, personally, I really dislike tutorials that make me download code. It completely goes against why I follow tutorials in the first place. But I think in this rare case, it might be a better way to learn Vulkan. I'm trying something different here and can't promise it will be any better than the other Vulkan tutorials out there. But my intent is to make things more approachable by flattening out the steepness of Vulkan's learning curve. All of the code provided will eventually be examined, rewritten, or extended. So the end result is that you've got into the same destination learning-wise, but did so by taking a much more enjoyable route. Rather than making you slog through all of this code now, we can do so bit by bit with the context of when it makes sense to do so. Finally, my goal with this series is that it can be used as a standalone resource appropriate for newcomers, but also will work well as a next step for someone who completed the Vulkan tutorial and wants to continue learning. So if you wish to gain a line-by-line -line understanding of this code, it is mostly just a combination of four sections from VulcanTutorial.com. I've provided links in the description below as optional reading. All right, so if you're still with me, let's download the header and CPP file and put them with your other code. Follow the link in the description below to the Google Drive and download the header and implementation files. Now drag both files you downloaded into your project and open the My Engine Device header file. At the top of the file, change this include to be for your window class. Update the namespace to match the rest of your project. Then do a find and replace to change the My Engine prefix to whatever you'd like. So in my case, I'm replacing all occurrences of My Engine to LVE in both my header and implementation files. Let's update the file names as well. So first we update our device CPP file name and then our device header file name. Then in your device implementation file, update the include at the top of the file to match what you just renamed your header to. All right, now if you scroll down to line 196, you should be getting a compiler warning that our window has no create window surface member function yet. And that's because it doesn't. So navigate to your window header and just below your should close method, let's add a new public method void create window surface, which takes a VK instance and a VK surface KHR pointer. Grab this function and go to your Windows implementation and paste it in. I'll add the class name and then in an if statement call glfw create window surface and pass in the instance the window, a null pointer for the allocator callback, and the pointer to our surface variable. Check that its return value is not equal to VK success, otherwise throw a runtime error. Fail to create Windows surface, and then I'll include standard accept at the top of the file. Now, if we go back to line 196 of our device file, we should have no more errors. Now, when you copy and paste files into your project, sometimes your IDE doesn't add them to your build system. I've had this problem when using Xcode before. So whatever build system you are using, it's good to double check to make sure that your device file is actually being compiled. Now, if you build and run your code, everything should still work as it did before. Here's a brief overview of what this device class does for us. In its constructor, the first thing we do is create a Vulkan instance. This initializes the Vulkan library and is the connection between our application and Vulkan. Next, we set up validation layers. By default, the Vulkan API does extremely little error checking during operation, meaning that even small errors won't be caught and can result in a crash or undefined behavior. So when debugging, we should enable validation layers to check for errors and then disable them for release builds when performance is critical. Next, we create our surface which relies on GLFW. 
and is the connection between the window we've set up in the previous lessons and Vulkan's ability to display results. Following that, we pick the physical device our application will be using. So the physical device is the graphics device in your system capable of working with the Vulkan API. This can be a discrete GPU like a 2080 Ti or an integrated GPU. In either case, we need to pick the physical device that we will be using to run our program. It's even possible to have your program use multiple devices at the same time, but this makes handling resources way more complicated and not something we'll be doing. Next, we have logical device creation, which describes what features of our physical device we want to use. And finally, it's convenient here to set up a command pool for later use. This will help us with command buffer allocation in an upcoming video. So just to reiterate, you're not supposed to understand all of this yet. For now, the only takeaways are, is one, we're setting up our connection with Vulkan and picking a physical device in our system that is capable of working with the Vulkan API. And two, we create validation layers that will help us catch errors. Now navigate to your pipeline header file and then include your device class. Next, we're going to create a struct to help us organize some data we will use to configure our pipeline. So in your namespace, but outside of the class, add a struct called pipeline config info. This is going to contain the data specifying how we want to configure our pipeline. The reason we're pulling this information out of the pipeline class is that we want our application layer code to be easily able to configure our pipeline completely, as well as to share that configuration between multiple pipelines. So just leave this struct empty for now and we'll come back to it later. Next, change your pipeline constructor to take a device passed by reference and a const pipeline config info reference. The ordering of your parameters doesn't matter. I'm just putting the device at the start and the config info at the end because I like how it looks better. Also update your create graphics pipeline function signature to take the pipeline config info. Next, I'll add a private member variable storing our device reference. This could potentially be memory unsafe. If our device is released from memory before our pipeline, we could attempt to dereference this dangling pointer, which would crash our program. So the only time you'll see me using a reference type member variable in this manner is when we have an implicit relationship that our member variable, in this case the device, will outlive any instances of the containing class that depend on it, which makes sense because a pipeline fundamentally needs a device to exist. In UML, this type of relationship would be known as aggregation. Now underneath, add a VK pipeline graphics pipeline variable. This is the handle to our Vulkan pipeline object. Then a VK shader module variable, vert shader module for our vertex shader, and another VK shader module for our fragment shader. Note that these Vulkan object types are type deft pointers in this case. It is a good practice to check what these Vulkan object types are. Sometimes it will be a POD struct, at other times it will be a type deft pointer to a struct. Then underneath our create graphics pipeline function, add void create shader module that takes in the shader code in the form of a vector of characters and a pointer to a shader module. Like with our VK pipeline, VK shader module is also a pointer. So this is in fact a pointer to a pointer, which is what we want in this case, because this function will be used to create the module and initialize the variable. Now, since our pipeline class is responsible for managing the lifetime of these resources, let's add a destructor with an empty implementation here just for now. And this is also a good time to delete our copy constructors because we want to avoid accidentally duplicating the pointers to our Vulkan objects. And finally, let's add a public static function for creating a default pipeline configuration. So static, pipeline config info as the return type, and we'll use default pipeline config info for the function name. As parameters, we'll take a uint32 type for both the width and the same for height. All right, now let's get to implementing. Copy our new constructor parameters, but first I just realized a mistake I made. This const shouldn't be here. So remove the const before your device parameter, and now copy our constructor and go to your implementation file. 
and paste over your parameters. Initialize our device in a member initializer list, so LVE device device. And then pass through your config info to the create graphics pipeline function. And then also update the parameters for our create graphics pipeline as well. All right, now grab your function signature from our pipeline header, paste it in, and add our engine's pipeline class name. We're going to create a local VK shader module create info variable, and we'll call it create info. This is going to be a common pattern you'll see throughout using the Vulkan API, where rather than calling a function with a bunch of parameters, we instead configure a struct and call a function with a pointer to it. So in this case, there are three values we need to set. The S type, which is equal to VK structure type, shader module create info. The code size, which is just the size of our vector array. And lastly, a pointer to our code. We need to use a reinterpret cast on our data since Vulkan expects a uint32 type rather than a car array. This is something to be careful with since you may have realized that an int32 and a character are not the same size. However, since our data is stored in a vector, the default allocator already ensures that the data satisfies the worst case alignment requirement. But if we were using a C style character array instead, this cast wouldn't be valid. In an if statement, we call VK create shader module. We use lvdevice.device, .device, which is a getter to the Vulkan device handle that our device class encapsulates. Then a pointer to our create info, a null pointer since we're not using any allocation callbacks, and finally our shader module. Check that this is not equal to VK success, otherwise throw some runtime error like fail to create shader module. Next, let's grab our default pipeline config info function. Remove static and add your class name and start by making a config info local variable and then simply return it for now. We will come back to this in just a moment, but it'll be nice to get our code back into a state that it compiles. So in your first app header, include your device class and create a new member variable LVE device and it takes our window as a constructor argument. Then for our pipeline constructor, add the device as your first argument, and as the last, a call to our LVE pipeline default pipeline config info function, with our width and our heights as arguments. And now, if you build and run your program, when we instantiate our LVE device, we output to the console what device extensions are available what extensions are required, as well as which physical device was picked. The required extensions are determined for us by GLFW and are the extensions that it needs in order to display content to the window it creates. If we take a look into our device class, you can find where we output this information and optionally remove it if you'd prefer not seeing it every time your program runs. Okay, so I've decided to split this video in two as it's already getting a bit long and it's been delayed enough as it is. We'll finish configuring our pipeline in the next video, which will be out soon. And if you would like a step-by-step -step video going through this device code, please leave a comment below and maybe I could make something like Appendix A device setup for this tutorial series sometime in the future.